her to this ministry. I just want to really tell her, this is the team I worked with, and whatever the strength you see is what it took ourselves, as me being the team leader, kind of to put ourselves together and understand the, main, the mandate of the ministry of public service, gender, senior citizens, social protection and assault. It was a whole paragraph. <laughs> at, the, at the end of it, you ended up with a whole paragraph of our ministry, but through this team, where I hand five chief administrative secretaries, I hand four permanent secretaries, we are able to come together in this particular boardroom every time, consult one another, make decisions, and measure our progress. I also want to really thank His Excellency the President, Dr. William Muruto, and for really spearheading this transition, the way he has handled the public servants, especially CSEs and the CASs and the PSs during this transition has really been a, a great job that has made all of us comfortable and we have seen how he has used the senior civil servants that he found, like the head of public service, to facilitate transition. So I want to thank him, uh, Your Excellency, the CS, and you can also pass that uh, uh, the appreciation to him. Let me also appreciate His Excellency, the President, Uhuru Kenyatta, who for the last 10 years has been able to steer this country and government for the kind of result that we see, which now this coming government is going to build on. Uh, for the 10 years, I think I can say with no fear of contradiction that during the time of His Excellency President Kenyatta, public service has been really strengthened. So, Madam, what you are finding, you will find a very solid public service, and I think that's what the building block that you take. You also find in State Department of Gender, we have tried to measure ourselves, and we have found just this year, it's actually the President Uru Kenyatta was awarded the gender award from the AU. And that gender award was really a, a, a breakthrough in Africa, where without assessing ourselves, it was found in Kenya, we have crossed the gender gaps in terms of access to education, access to health, access to better quality of, of, of life. So I think there are tangible, demonstrable results that you build on. We also moved from number 118 uh, as a country, 118 in terms of gender development index, to number, right now we are actually number, what, number 57. We were number 118 in 2020, 2020, no, we were number 118 in the 2018. In the 2020, we are number 95. And in the 2022, we are number 57. So that CS, I just now tell you we are 57, we hope to get to the 40s. Mm. This is very, very important because in the gender space, everybody could be doing everything, but if you don't do the major progress, are we making progress, then you don't know if you are doing a good job. We have also seen for the very first time more women were elected as governors, were elected as members of parliament, and also within the county, and also the number of women in the executive, the number of women in judiciary, for sure we are at our best. We are not where we would like to be, but we are at our best, and I'm happy to hand over that to you so that you can build on it. I also want to thank the team that I've been working with, especially PSs and other senior staff, because when we were told by the head of public service we prepare for you, they have done all the briefing. That's why we are not talking a lot here now. But the briefing has been done to you to tell us, to tell you what are the functions of this ministry, what are our achievements, what are our challenges, and what you are going to take over. That is the report I'm going to give it to you. My fifth point would be, I didn't want to highlight the critical role of public service especially also including gender and all issues of diversity and inclusion. CS, one of the things that you are going to, to find very useful is to be sure that once we know the manifesto, we understand the sustainable development goals, we understand the vision, Kenya Vision 2030, with these teams, 
we will look at what you already find because they are already plants. Mm. Looking at the plants, mm. you look at how we organize structures that can deliver on those plants. You do a lot of coordination and then assessing through performance uh, contracting uh, management to see how each ministry is moving. So you find this ministry is the center that holds in the public service. You are all, and I think that's why I really wanted to reach this point, you are all will be to help public servants make Saudi decisions. That's why you have come at the political level, so that a lot of things they struggle with, sometimes in public service, you're not making decisions very quickly. You will take that political responsibility and help them with the information they will put on the table, with the data they will put on the table, consult Windry, help them make a decision and move regarding the, the, the policies that we need to develop. Madam CS will be measured by how many policies have you formulated, how many policies have you reviewed, how many policy advisory have you given. So that I think that is what the ministry is supposed to do, rather than to be seen more like implementing. The implementing are state corporations and us. That means if you have a sound policy, the state corporations and us will implement. And then you will be held for coordination because you should know at the implementation level which, ministry, which department is implementing what and how successful are they or where do they require help. Therefore, uh, was, we, we want to wish you all the best and uh, you'll be providing that effective leadership at policy level and also as a strategic direction in line with the national development goals. That is the role of the uh, uh, CS. And also ask the staff, don't bombard the CS with many technical issues. Yeah. CS has the policy and there's a strategic intent so that you leave out to just review at that level and be the bridge that takes you to the cabinet for any decision. Finally, I want to say every administration meets its own challenges. Unique. For now, we know the manifesto has really addressed things to do with cost of living, the serious situation of uh, the economy. We also realize that uh, as this administration is coming in, we are having severe droughts where Kenya has not uh, had rain for the last four seasons. But I want to say together, you and the team here, challenges can be turned to opportunities. So long as you stay together, the, every, there's no administration wound over that doesn't have its own challenges. But the, the, the wisdom of it is to have those challenges change to opportunities. So, CS, I wish you all the best. We are just a telephone away when you will give you space. Let me declare that. <laughs> we'll give you a lot of space so that you can work for this country because the position we hold are positions of honor, positions of privilege, and the position of high trust. Mm. Therefore, there are 50 million Kenyans, but me and you and our other senior civil servants have had an opportunity to give service to Kenya for the purpose of getting a better quality of life for all Kenyans, as indicated in Vision 2030. Therefore, we will support you when you, you need us, and I can assure you the team that I'm leaving behind is a very strong team that should give you comfort so that you, have, you don't have sleepless nights. Because if you have sleepless nights, then you will not be able to support His Excellency the President, and we want you to succeed. We are also told in the leadership, if you exit a leadership and somebody else comes and that leadership fails, then I was a bad leader. Mm. Are we together? Yes. So as I, I am very concerned and interested in success of CS uh, Aisha Jumo yeah. so that it is part of my success because I've given her the button. So as she moves on, she'll be building on that block and whoever else she'll give, this country will be a better country. Therefore, I want to stop here and wish you all the best and God's blessings. And also the PSS who are with me, I wish you well. If you survive, I think <laughs> <laughs> we leave that to God because I want, I'm one person who believes God will always put you where he wants you to be. Not where you want to be, where he wants you to be. So my PSS, four of them, my heart goes out for you and I hope you'll find space somewhere.
Even if you don't find it, we, never, we, never, yeah. we have, we thank God for the opportunity we have had to serve mm -hmm. and they look forward. Mm -hmm. A, a, a lot of people when you get to CS or PSS, you didn't come from the street. Yes. You are good. You should be able to go and serve. So long as the the burden is that of service, yeah. you will find the space. So thank you very much, and uh, I want to wish you all the best. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kobia. Now you can all confirm what I said about succession management. Yes. She has just been continuing with that lesson that uh, even if we don't fight space, the, C the PSCs, we'll continue to serve. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, uh, be closer to her today because I have been following her uh, on social media, on YouTube, when I was mentioned as the uh, CS for public service, I had to actually do my research. And uh, one was on her. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned so many uh, things and I have picked, I, I picked to making sure that um, I give it, I give it the best. And uh, with the team of, uh, with this team of men and women of competence, I think uh, this uh, uh, ministry will continue to flourish. So allow me to read my, my speech, then uh, as usual. <laughs> so, <laughs> Professor Kobia, PhD, EGH, my colleague and outgoing cabinet secretary, Hon Dr. J.B. Kilimo, EGH, Chief Administrative Secretary, Principal Secretaries, Ms. Mary Kimonye, CBS, and Professor Colette A. Suda, CBS, Ministry Officials, Present, Members of the Press, uh, good, morning. good morning. I am pleased to join you this morning to this ministerial handing over ceremony. At the onset, I wish to express my gratitude to His Excellency the President for appointing me as Cabinet Secretary for the Public Service, Gender and Affirmative Action. It is indeed humbling and a great honor. Allow me to appreciate the outgoing Cabinet Secretary for her strong, and this I wanted this to be in bold, and indeed it is in bold. <laughs> Um, allow me to appreciate the outgoing uh, cabinet secretary for her strong leadership and hard working during her tenure in this ministry. I look forward to continue her legacy and draw upon her wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, the ministry sits at the core of our national development. On the one hand, public service is the engine of service delivery to the citizens. And on the other hand, gender and affirmative action are weighty and urgent issues that our nation must, fo must focus on. If we are to attain all inclusive and transformative development, women form the majority of our population. I joined this ministry full aware of the enormity and importance of the assignment before me and the team I will be working with, as well as the high expectations of Kenya regarding the performance of this ministry. It is therefore important to note that we have no choice but to hit the ground running. I am encouraged to know that I will benefit from the work my predecessor, Professor Kobia, who has ably steered the ministry and delivered transformative programs to women, youth, and PWDs, especially under the affirmative action programs and spearheaded development of critical policies for public service management. Thank you, Waziri. Thank you, Madam CS. I wish you well in your future plans. CS Cobia has this morning given me a detailed brief of key priorities and achievements of the ministry. 
I will be guided by the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto. Build on this achievement on each of key areas of focus. I will, on the public service, I will, I will work to ensure that we have an, an efficient and effective public service through, one, having the right people with the right skills in the right jobs. Efficient utilization of public resources that to reduce wastage while increasing performance and productivities. Adherence of national values and principle as per Article 10, 232, and Chapter 6 of the Constitution. To continue to drive in bringing transformation in public service delivery agenda of the public service at both levels of government. On gender, I note that a lot has been achieved over the years in the areas of gender equality, women empowerment, especially representation in decision make, making, breaking the silence on gender-based violence and economic empowerment. However, more are still remain to be done. One, priority will be given to women's economic empowerment, ending GBV and implementation of the constitutional provisions of Article 81B of not more than two-thirds uh, of either gender. To develop an affirmative uh, to develop an affirmative policy and to support the, fi uh, the finalization of the process of merger of affirmative action funds into the proposed Biashara Bank. <coughs> and number nine, in implementing this broad mandate, I will be guided by the spirit of the sustainable development goal of leave no one <coughs> behind inclusivity engagement and partnership with will remain key as you know the issues under gender ministry are cross-cutting the ministry of public service gender and affirmative action is one of the enablers of this agenda for all the other ministry to deliver on this agenda the country requires a high efficient and result-based public service so public service transformation will remain a key on focus for me in order to ensure service are provided in an efficient and effective manner that public service resources are used for intended purposes public servants embrace the right culture in delivery of services and creating an enabling environment for facilitation national for facilitating national development ladies and gentlemen to succeed i am full aware that i cannot do this alone each and every officer has a role to play my role as a cs will be provide uh, will be provide the requisite leadership direction and environment to inspire and encourage high performance in the ministry and to build the requisite networks and partnership with our key stakeholders within and out governments i urge the head of department to build the heads of departments to build strong teams within their various departments and to adhere to a specific target expressed in the government's development agenda under the MTIP and the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto. My vision and desire is to run a highly cohesive and citizen responsive ministry guided by the values and principles of governance and the various policies already in place.